Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the How To Carnivore podcast and YouTube series. We're joined again by Dr. Chafee, the plant-free MD. Anthony, welcome. All right, yeah, thanks, man. Good to see you. Likewise. And today we've got a special guest, Rory Bland, aka Rory's Kitchen on Instagram. Um, Rory, you're awesome. I really don't know much about you, but I enjoy following your Instagram account. So I'm looking forward to learning more about you and, and your journey. Welcome. Awesome. Thanks for having me, fellas. Excited to be here. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, excited to have you on. So I'm um, looking at your Instagram account now. You've got a lot of followers, 160,000. <laughs> and you do these you do these great videos all about carnivore um, and carnivore cooking. So how did you how did you get into carnivore and, and what led you down this path? Sweet. So like many people, I found myself in like a health predicament and I needed some changes. So I've, I've had health problems. I'm 33. I've had a health problem since I was about three. Started with asthma, um, grommets, adenoids taken out, um, constantly sick. And, you know, it just kind of all sorts of things over the years from glandular fever to bronchitis, uh, asthmatic, lots of antibiotic steroids over the years, just ch chockers full of became a pro at taking them. And then acne uh, when I was a teenager and being on Rakutane as well for that to get rid of the acne. And then it kind of just stopped for, you know, around 16. I didn't really seem to have problems from about 16 to, I don't know, like 19, 20. And then um, my dad passed when I was 17. He had a theresclerosis. He had a, um, well, that's what they say it was. He had a heart attack at 46 and he had a really, you know, intense, stressful lifestyle, gambling industry, you know, very unhealthy. And that put me on a bit of a health journey. I moved into, uh, I got into vegetarianism partially to impress this girl that was on MySpace and um, <laughs> admittedly, but she never knew. I didn't tell her. I was like, I just, I just felt like maybe if she would ask, then I'd have all this, you know, anyway, the things we do. Um, <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> and then I learned about veganism through another friend and I was like, oh, okay, this makes so much sense. And so like ethically, that's where I was coming from was like, I became an ethical vegan. This is probably 2008. And then I moved into a yoga retreat. Um, so I moved into a yoga retreat uh, because I was partying a lot at this stage, like just lots of, lots of drinking, you know, recreational drugs and just really toxic. I was in a death metal band and, you know, it was very opposite to my lifestyle now. And yeah, I moved into a yoga retreat to basically live a, like change my lifestyle, went vegan in there. And then my health problems started to begin. And I started after to After the drugs, after you stopped the drugs, he <laughs> stopped, right? <Yes>. Yeah. <laughs> I stopped them. I should have stayed on them. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it wasn't, you know, yeah, it wasn't huge health issues to begin with. It was low energy, but- when you notice a significant dip in your energy, like it starts to dwindle, it's like, hang on. Cause I'd never experienced low energy before. So I went to a doctor, they, she's like, check your iron B12. I was like, all right, they were, you know, kind of low. We brought them up a bit with supplements, injections, whatever. Didn't really do anything. And it just kept getting worse. And so I went and saw an expensive raw food naturopath who put me on even more expensive supplements mm -hmm. and got me on raw foods and got me doing green smoothies and these things. And I felt even worse. So mm -hmm. I, I left the ashram at just about 20, trying to figure out what the heck is wrong with my health, started studying nutrition, mm -hmm. but I was lost cause for like, yeah, a good little while there. That was a really intense period. I uh, just got a question about where you were living. What, so you were living in some sort of yoga community? What, yeah, what was an ashram. It's called the Satinanda Yoga Ashram. I'm not sure if they're still running anymore, but that was in uh, Mangrove Mountain in New South Wales. So I was there for about eight months. I wow. shaved my head. I took a spiritual name. I was wearing all white. It was cool. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> what an experience. Totally. Totally. Hey, guys. Just want to take a second to thank our sponsor, Carnivore Bar. I don't promote many products because honestly all you need to be healthy is just eat meat and that's what you should do 
But if uh, you're hiking or road tripping or stuck at work and you want something nutritious that is just meat, fat, and possibly salt if you want it, the Carnivore Bar is a great option. I like this product not only because it is pure meat, but also because I really want the carnivore market to thrive as well. The more we support meat-only products, the more people will make meat-only products, and this will bring us into the mainstream. So if this sounds like something you'd like to check out, then take a look and use my discount code HTC to get 10% off, which also applies to subscriptions, giving you 25% off total. All right. Thanks, guys. That's full on. So sorry so so when did, so obviously you're getting a lot worse your health is is really going downhill and then what how did you bring yourself out of that like what was the progression there so it kept going downhill but it was like this up and down for years so i tried i heard about so i started eating meat again uh, reluctantly i started eating eggs honey yogurt didn't really do anything. The only thing that helped was meat, but then I was still all over the place. I had like candida symptoms. I still had fatigue, brain fog, joint pain started to develop. And then I, I basically yo-yoed between normal whole foods, organic, uh, like organic whole foods and gluten-free and raw vegan and vegan. I moved between those for about from 2010 until 2016 I was just fluctuating wasn't really improving I found like I was able to manage the symptoms a little bit but overall the joint pain was getting worse over the years and I found like my window of tolerance of things that I could eat was getting smaller and smaller and then I did vegan properly again for like 18 months stacked on like 20 pounds was fit but I still felt horrible inside and I just kind of gave up until last year so this is like 13 years of yo-yoing, trying to figure out stuff with diet, literally had no clue, like no hope it felt like. And I tried a lot of things and, you know, naturopaths, doctors, a lot of people that I saw spent tens of thousands. I had no resolution. And then I started seeing, like many people do, all these videos of carnivore on TikTok, Reels, YouTube. I think the thing that sent me over the edge was Michaela Peterson's TED Talk and just mm -hmm. hearing about, it's like, oh, so if someone that has really chronic autoimmune stuff can reverse that, put into remission doing animal-based or doing carnivore, just meat, I'm like, maybe that can help with my stuff. Let's give it a go. And it, because I couldn't really eat anything without reacting any way. Anything I'd eat, I'd break out in my skin or I'd have joint pain or I feel tired. So at that point, I just like, it was my 33rd birthday last year in August and I was excited to take on the world, but I was in sick in bed vomiting and I'm like, no, nah, this is, um, this is it. So yeah, I uh, decided to give it a crack for 24 hours and kind of as a joke, you know, how you see those videos of, I tried, I only eat Taco Bell for 24 hours. And <laughs> I thought, wouldn't it be funny to do the lime diet for 24 hours, you know, maybe <laughs> make a bit of viral content, see what happens. But I felt really good. And I'm like, oh, Thanks. all right, let's do it for 30 days. And uh, kind of, yeah, the rest is kind of history. So that's how I <laughs> got here, the long version, I guess. No, no, no. That's great. So, mm. so on that 30 days, can mm. you, can you tell us, okay, so how are you feeling before and, and, mm. and how are you feeling after? Like, what was your progression? What did you see as an improvement? Mm. So straight away, what I noticed was within two to three days, the joint pain was going down and I was, that was the first thing that I noticed. And that was really cool. I'm like, wow. All right. This is sweet. But it was, up and down throughout the whole time. Like I was really tired some days, partially because I was working a job plus making these videos that took me like four to five hours a day. Cause I was making, wow. you know, TikToks and Instagrams and posting it and they were going crazy. So I was like, all right, well, I've got to keep going with these videos. So I was doing very little sleep. I think if I did more sleep, I would have felt a lot better, but anyway. Um, so I was doing these videos, I was doing it daily and I, the joint pain first, and then the skin started to improve. And then I started to have this glow and I hadn't had this glow in my skin for who knows how long my eyes were whiter. I was feeling fabulous. What else? My brain fog, my mood was balancing, but then I, what day 17, 18, 
the what do they call it the keto flu carnivore flu die off whatever you want to call it i was just sick for a couple of days i felt like i got hit by a bus i was ready to die and <laughs> it was just full on and uh, but i got through that after a couple Good. of days and um yeah so but then yeah I, it wasn't really until like everything was improving bowel movements were good my stench went away so i didn't stink anymore when i went to the toilet when i sweated i didn't smell which was the opposite of what I thought would happen, you know, because everyone yeah. thinks that when you eat only meat, you're just going to smell like a big rotting carcass. <laughs> so were um, you, did, did you have sort of like smelly, like BO and there was just smells before carnivore? Oh yeah. Yeah. My son, uh, he knew to not come near me if I went to the toilet or if I farted, everyone would have to get away. <laughs> yeah. It was like full on, but now it's yeah. fine. So, um, yeah. but yeah, so yeah, it was notoriously stinky, but then, yeah, it was. <laughs> Thank God for the video call. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, you fixed it now. <laughs> so, yeah, but the, the 30 days was good. I noticed huge improvements in all areas. The, I didn't really have energy to work out or do any fitness stuff for a while. Cause like, I was still figuring out how much meat do I eat? Mm -hmm. You know, like it's, it was weird at first to eat more than like 300 grams of meat. I'm like. But mm -hmm. now I can, you know, probably eat up to a kilo if I really needed to. I was hungry. No problem. Like a couple of days ago, I had like 300 grams. I'm like, is that it? <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. So it was that adjustment, figuring out my hunger cues, figuring out my macros. And But around week six, that's when my energy just... And I'm like, that's when I knew that this was working. This was life-changing. And um, yeah, it's just kind of off to the races from there. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you've been doing this strong for about a year now. Is that right? Um, six months. Six so months. started in November and my goal was never to go like steak carnivore exclusively forever. Mm -hmm. Like I was really wanting to move into the gaps diet after that. Cause I heard that that was like the gut healing thing to do. And mm -hmm. so everything I was doing from the part start included a lot of meat stocks and, you know, which is very heavy on the gaps diet around healing and, and that, uh, uh, anti-inflammatory type stuff and that was incredible. And then I was always trying to introduce foods with basically no luck. The only thing that I felt like I could actually eat was like sauerkraut juice, maybe a little bit of sauerkraut. Mm -hmm. So I basically ate meat for six weeks and then like chicken, lamb and beef. And then I tried egg yolks, didn't work. I tried butter, butter and ghee were fine. That was really great. So now it's basically, I'm hovering around 95% carnivore, but mm -hmm. some days I'm just, I just eat meat, you know, and butter and ghee. And I love those days. But the only thing that I'm eating that's not is probably oh, a little bit of sauerkraut, pumpkin, zucchini here and there, mm. you know. Um, but overall, yeah, it's, it's um, I'd say carnivore-ish, mostly carnivore. But and, I, let's go for it, man. So, and, and so is the intention to try and introduce things, Rory? Or what's mm. the, what, what are you kind of thinking? That's, that's the intention is to like, just kind of test and see what I could do and like, see what my body can tolerate. Like I'm really curious, but I've got this baseline that I hover around where I'm, I, my fallback now is typically carnival. So that's kind of my baseline now is that, uh, but not like, I don't want to introduce, try and introduce foods with oxalates or, you know, mm. like those sorts of things. I'm staying very 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 far away from those things so sticking i think very close to the carnival principles as possible because um, you know you, you've talked a lot, a lot about this anthony and um so i'm trying my best to stay away from that but it seems i okay. seem to do okay with no reaction on pumpkin and zucchini so i'm just i'm just chilling there you know that's fine you know and, and the thing is too is you know not not everyone's heard everything and and you know people can relay the same information in different ways and that strikes a different chord with different people so you know don't don't feel like you're repeating anything you know it's it's, no, it's go important for real. To, you know what your experience was and what you, you know, and the insights that you've taken from that um you know one thing I, i've sort of thought about with the the gaps diet is the carnivore is probably the ultimate gaps diet. It's the ultimate it eliminates absolutely everything that you could possibly react with. Even some meats, you know, some people react to certain meats or eggs and dairy and things like that. And so, you know, if you get down really, really down to just grass fed and finished beef, I mean, I don't know anyone who hasn't been bitten by a tick who reacts to grass fed and finished beef, you know, and they only do it for like a couple of months and they're back in, back in action, but you know, and, um, 
but I, I like that concept, you know, it's like eliminating out these things or these things that can cause harm. It's that concept that I think more people need to, to get behind that there are certain things in our diet that we're eating that we're not biologically predisposed to eat that are going to cause these problems and you eliminate them and you can eliminate the source of these problems. And I, I really like that mindset. Yeah, it's been a game changer. Hey, like just stripping everything away, absolutely mm -hmm. everything to the number one thing that you can survive on, which is meat mm -hmm. and just stripping it down and just seeing how it goes. And shockingly, well, not shockingly once you know, but you feel so good doing that. And it's like, do yeah. I stay here forever? <laughs> it's like, is, yeah. this, is this home? Yeah, well, I did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have no interest. And, you know, as some people say, well, you know, don't you find it hard, you know, that you have such a lot of discipline, you know, staying with this for so long. I'm like, there's no discipline involved. I have no interest in ever feeling like that again, even though I, I felt what I thought was good. And I was able to perform at a high level, both physically, mentally, academically, and, and professionally. I, I, I feel nothing close to as good um, than as I do now. And so it's just, there's, it's just a no brainer for me. I just, you know, I want to feel great all the time. And so this is what I'm going to do. Mm, I'm, I'm the same. I want to feel as good as I can and be as healthy as I can. Uh, and carnivore works for me. I know that, uh, that Paul Mason said that he's carnivore out of hedonism and people generally mm -hmm. think of hedonism as sort of like overindulging and seeking pleasure, et cetera. But he's doing it because he knows that if he sticks to beautiful fatty meat after every meal, he feels good. And that's, I can really relate to that. I think you can too, Anthony. It's like, well, you get that good feeling and I just want to keep feeling that. And every time you kind of let yourself down, you're like, oh, it's going to take a few days to get back to feeling that real, you know, optimal way. Yeah. I, I even have nightmares now about eating carbs and like, I'll, like eat some like potato or something like that. My dream, I'm like, oh my God, what have I done? Like, crap, my back's going to kill me for the next like four days. Like, Jesus, all right, I get rid of this stuff. And I, and I won't even know it. It's just all of a sudden like, oh, Oh my God, I just ate that. Why did I eat that? And um, yeah. And so, you know, it's sort of funny when you wake up about how, how sort of silly that is, but you know, it's true. Like I, you know, if, if something like that gets in my diet, my back hurts bad for four days and I don't like that. And uh, I think the last time that happened, I was at a restaurant, some like beans and rice got mixed in with the meat that I was eating. I was sort of trying to separate and scrape it off, but didn't, didn't get it all the, all the way done. And literally like someone was stabbing me in the lower back for the next four days. I could, I actually couldn't get out of bed normally. I had mm -hmm. to sort of position myself and work my way around. And like, my, like I had completely thrown out my back or something like that. And like got up on all fours and sort of positioned myself up and then was able to get it up that way. And as long as I was sort of upright, I could maintain that, but it took four full days before that, that subsided to the point of, uh, you know, getting back to normal. And that's just, you know, hashtag not worth it. Like why, why for like some rice, like who cares? Like I just, and it was not even a lot of rice. It was like a little bit of rice. So, you know, that is just, that is just so not worth it to me. Um, you know, drinking alcohol, there's, there's more to that than like a bit of rice, you know, at least you get, you know, you get the, the effects of being drunk. People enjoy that. I certainly enjoy being drunk a lot yeah, more than I enjoy eating rice. I'll tell you that right now. And, you know, if, and so, you know, um, I just avoid that stuff. Completely. I don't, and I don't drink really either. I like every, you know, year and a half, two years, something like that. It's very rare and I pay the price and I, I don't feel my best for three weeks, you know, but I, I go into it knowing that. And, um, you know, so you have, you have that sort of trade-off and every single time I do it, I'm like, why did I do this? Why did I do this? It's not worth it. Why? You know, man, I'm with you there. Hey, yeah. Rory, what, what do your friends and family think about you switching to a, a carnivore diet pretty much? Well, because they've seen me months. try a lot of stuff over the years. They're just not surprised at what I'm doing. So <laughs> I think that's really helpful. But the the only family members that were like, oh, that's kind of weird was my um, on my son's mum's side. I don't know how to articulate that, but his, yeah, yeah. his, his grandparents, my son's grandparents, yeah. um, your, your in-laws. So yeah. In yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Christmas, Christmas lunch, I get there and I'm like, Hey, I'm not going to be eating anything. I brought my own lamb stew. It was just lamb and water and salt. And it was incredible. 
absolutely amazing. <laughs> Wouldn't have traded it for anything. And I explained, I'm like, I'm doing this because I actually have a lot of health issues. And she's like, but you eat so healthy and you eat organic. I'm like, mm. yeah, but mm. you know, I didn't really go into it because I just didn't want to go down that rabbit hole that day. But I just mm. said to her, look, I've actually had health issues for years. I look healthy on the outside. The reason I eat organic and eat all these things is because I feel unhealthy inside. Otherwise I just eat whatever. And this is a really apparent, I, 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 I get around pushback by saying apparently, you know, and by being a te- like testing it. Right. And now I'm, I'm more of an evangelist, so I'd be a lot more direct, but then it was like, oh, apparently this is the most, you know, anti-inflammatory diet and I've got really chronic joint pain and inflammation. So I'm giving it a crack and they're like, oh, okay. And, uh, and then when they found out that it's helped, they were like, oh, they kind of came around a bit, but you know, no, my immediate good. family at home, very supportive because they've seen the benefits as well. They're like, man, this is, this has literally been the best thing I've done in the last 14 years for my health. So, and they're on board. Yeah. So, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And then, so what about, what about your, your immediate family and, um, your son and everything like that? Well, how has, has that affected their diet as well? He eats more meat now. Mm-hmm which is good. Uh, he's never really been a big meat eater. He mm-hmm. loves dairy. He's a dairy fiend, that boy, but I understand that, but uh, it hasn't really affected them. They have more bone broths or more meat stocks now, mm-hmm. and they are having more meat dishes as I cook them, but it hasn't really affected. Like I've always cooked three meals anyway, because mm-hmm. we've all had different things. So it's just normal yeah. for me to cook. Hasn't really affected the, that mm-hmm. much, except the fact that I have a lot more brain space because I know what I'm having for dinner. It's meat. And I know what I'm having for breakfast and lunch. It's just, it's just meat. But for them, I get to put more time in for their food. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and I mean, even just that influence of seeing you eating a lot more meat, you know, I mean, they're obviously going to care about that. You know, their dad who they really care about is doing a lot better, is much more healthy. And he's just eating that way. That's going to influence them. Yeah. And that's going to slowly but surely, you know, in, in, you know, make them sort of think, well, maybe I should try this. And, and even just eating more meat, it, you know, it's already there. It's already getting in their head and just understanding that meat is not bad, that fat is not the enemy, that that is such an important life lesson to understand uh, as a kid growing up. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's very much learnt. Like he, he, he would say to me, he's so cute. Sometimes he would say the healthiest food is apples. I'm like, Oh, well, some people would say that, but you know what I reckon? I reckon the healthiest food on the planet, you've got your, your meat and your meat stock. And and then it trickles down. He's like, and then a couple of weeks later, he's like, dad, you know what the healthiest food is? I'm like, what? He says, meat stock, broth, and then meat. I'm like, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. He, it's so clever of him to work that out as well all by himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, and that, and that just lays down these habits for a lifetime, you know, like the, uh, that. I mean, it got so much scorn in America and, and deservedly so, but that, um, that doctor that was, you know, government official, I think she was from Stanford, shockingly enough, maybe not, but anyway, she was, um, you know, she was a government official, a doctor. And she said that, um, you know, don't worry about, you know, uh, about diet and exercise and things like that for obesity. It's nothing you can do. It's just genetic, you know, and I was like, wait, what, <laughs> like, when, when, <laughs> when has that been a thing? Um, you know, saying, well, 80% of, people, if your parents are obese, you have an 80% chance of being obese. So that's just genetic. There's nothing you can do about it. Oh, well then just eat all the hoes and candy you want then doesn't matter, you know, and, um, you'll either be a, you know, Mr. Olympia or, or you won't, you know, but it has nothing to do with anything that you, you know, any choices you make in your life, which is just insane. You know, you're taking, you're taking, you're taking away a lot of control out of people's lives. First of all, it can be very defeatist. And also you're just justifying people just doing that. Ah, doesn't matter anyway. I'm just going to smoke, drink and eat candy doesn't matter anyway. So why should it, why should I t- change my behavior? And, um, and of course that's wrong. You know, I mean, you learn these behaviors from your parents and then they, they carry on with you as an adult. And of course, that's why there's this, this, this run of obesity in families, because you learn these behaviors from your parents. And sometimes you learn the opposite. Sometimes you, you learn what not to do, but a lot of times you, you grow up and you're eating these ways and you have these same problems and, you know, type two diabetes, the same thing. Type two diabetes has, has a much stronger familial 
uh, relation than type one diabetes. Now there could be genetic components with that, but I think it's absolutely the case that there's a strong environmental, you know, habitual, um, uh, pattern that people learn as kids that carry on into adulthood and, you know, and you can, you can pick up diabetes from that. Mm. It reminds me of that quote. Uh, what is it? They say obesity runs in the family, but it's the problem is no one runs in the family. Kind yeah. of thing, <laughs> right? It's yeah. because yeah, it's, it's habitual. We learn off our parents, even subconsciously habits, everything. So yeah, I'm, I'm hundred percent with you. It needs to start from the top down. Mm, yeah. And uh, yeah, well, that's great. You know, so I, you know, it's only been six months, mm. you know, give it a, give it a year. We'll see, you know, kids just, you know, taking T-bones to school. You never know. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, no, hey, Rory, how's carnivore affecting other parts of your life? Like your uh, like work, family, mental health, all that. So much. It's like I said, it's been literally the best thing I've done for my health in the last 14 years of just trying all sorts of things. Nice. And it's helped me with my emotions and my mood swings. I didn't realize how like moody and angry I was before. And it's helped me level out. So as a result, I'm more pleasant to be around and I'm uh, a better father as well. It's, it's helped me a lot around my mental health because if you've got a problem you're trying to solve for 14 years and you think about it every day and you're worried about how you're going to feel every time you eat, it takes mm. up a lot of brain space. So it opened up a lot of brain space for me and not worrying about food for the first time in 14 years. I can't stress how mm. unstressful that is. It's so good. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's sweet. Um, what else? It's it, it also revealed like a bunch of like underlying issues that I didn't realize that I had as well. So because I was always feeling like crap from stress around diet tip, that was kind of one of the main things, but that was gone. And then I realized, hang on, like my nervous system is fried. I am like so dysregulated. I am all over the place with my nervous system constantly in freeze response or shutting down all over the place in sympathetic and I really I was like, one of my friends is a, like a somatic um, trauma therapist. And she's like, these are all like trauma responses, Rory. And so I started working with her and doing like work around my nervous system and um, learning about how that affects the gut. And so once I started to do that, and I wouldn't have figured that out if I didn't do carnivore, that on top of it, I am like a superhuman. I'm unstoppable. So it's, it's been really helpful with that. And that's taken my mental and personal emotional health to the next level. And that's something that I didn't really hear about much until, yeah, I, I think I started feeling good. So that's been probably one of my favorite things I would say, definitely. And career wise, unexpectedly, uh, I now make food videos and content. <laughs> and uh about what i do so i do this um full time now as well so that's an wow. unexpected benefit oh that's, that's really awesome. good yeah, yeah. that's really sick so is that just on instagram or where else uh instagram tiktok youtube facebook and uh apparently snapchat is people make making bank on there but i'm i feel what? a bit old for snapchat so i'm just gonna leave that like making right, a sandwich okay. naked or something like that <laughs> <laughs> who, who knows like, yeah. and it disappeared <laughs> Yeah. Uh, is, is, that, is that from like the lives and things like that, that they would, they would go live and people would just send them money for some reason? Stories, like, stories yeah. there. You know how there's like ads between videos on shorts and TikTok and, uh, you know, no. you see those ads in between stories. People are just making bank on stories, uploading like yeah. 70 to 200 stories a day and um, yeah, making a lot. But um, that's, I mean, you know, that's managing four platforms on your own is hard enough. So I'm just going to stick mm. with the big four, but mainly TikTok and it's mainly Instagram. I feel, you know, Instagram's cool. It's cool. I dig yeah. it. So, how did you get going with your page? Because you haven't been going mm. for that long and it's really taken off talk to us about, <laughs> talk to us about like, you know, I mean, there's a lot of carnivals out there and there's a lot of people who have health issues. So I'm not that surprised, but, but talk to me yeah. about how, how this all went down. Mm. So I've been making content for a while. First YouTube video is 2006 kind of a thing. And then I started making my first YouTube videos in 2011 or 12 on, on like plant-based food, sharing my green smoothies and all that sort of stuff. 
and to drive traffic to a blog that I had. And then I was like, hey, this video thing's really fun. So I was making these food videos for a couple of years and I started to run health events around Australia and like things were taking off. But then I felt really inauthentic because I felt like crap all the time. And I pulled away from being a health health person and went into freelancing and social media because, you know, uh, I felt like I was starting to do damage if I was talking about stuff. I, I didn't have all the clues and I'm glad I stopped. Very glad I stopped. So I, yeah, basically freelancing for companies and businesses, everything from digital marketing, like funnels to making videos. And I just had a lot of practice over the years and then, but never really created anything for myself for about five years. And then TikTok happened and I started making rollerblading videos just for fun. And then that took off. I think it grew to about 30,000 in about eight or nine months. I was like, what on earth is going on here? And then I stopped that. I was like, I, I got a bit bored. I was like, okay, I'm done with that. And then I started documenting kind of like my homesteading journey because I was planning on homesteading and I grew that really quickly. Um, instead of in nine months, it was like three weeks. And yeah. I was like, okay, I think I might've figured this thing out. So then I started offering that as a service to businesses doing TikTok. And then I got a client's TikTok to a hundred thousand in uh, about five, six weeks. And we had a video that did almost 15 million views on yeah. almond milk, which was wild. So yeah, it was, it was, it, it was my style though. It was my yeah. style of content, my humor. Okay. And it was, uh, I figured it out, but then I was like, huh. Why am I doing this for other people? I should just yeah. do my own thing. Maybe I could do a living with this. And so I took that format. And if you've seen my videos, you'll see the format. It's like it's like a 10-minute YouTube video in 60 seconds. Yeah. And I put a lot of things in there. And it's very fast talking, lots of storytelling, lots of random jokes and things. And I figured out a formula. But I didn't expect it to take off the way it did. I did a, a video on marshmallows and that did pretty well. And then my line diet video, the line diet for 24 hours, uh, it's at like 10 million now. I was like, wow, that's um, it's 20 million across the platforms. Wow. <laughs> like, how, much on, how much on YouTube? Oh, uh, not much, to be honest. Okay. Only like 70,000. It's mainly TikTok and Instagram and Facebook. Yep. Facebook's crazy. <laughs> but I just started, I was like, okay, people like it. I'm going to follow this format. And I'm, at the end of that video, I was like, you know, guys, should I do this for 30 days? And then a whole bunch of people said, yes. I'm like, all right, let's do it. And, uh, you know, we all want to go viral and all that stuff, but you're not, I wasn't prepared for it when it happened. It just took off a lot quicker, especially Instagram. Did not expect that. Did not expect that. And it was just within, within 10 weeks, I think 440,000 people across the platforms. Wow. That's really good. Yeah. Really good. So well, you know, you, I mean, you're obviously putting something out there that people like. You know, yeah. and so that's good. Um, can't comment on the almond milk thing, unfortunately, but uh, you know, all the rest of the stuff, I'm glad that they like that. And so that's great. You know, you're, you're putting things out in, in a desirable context or content that, that people like, and they, they're going to see, and they're going to pass that on. Exactly. And, and that's the whole, that's the whole, th whole idea. I mean, you heard about this randomly, you know, and then you know, that's how people hear about, hear about this now. It's not getting stuffed down people's faces in schools or by the government. It's the opposite. And so, you know, the more of these things that get out there, the more of these viral content videos get out there, you know, people are going to see this stuff and go, huh, all right. I have those same problems. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe that's something that could work for me. That is exactly what's happened. I'm, I'm sure you get comments and, and things as well, but that's the thing that I didn't expect to happen as a side thing was all these people starting to comment message that me sharing these videos and introducing them changed mm. their life. They did it. They're reversing the things that I had. And it's like that viral effect, you know, of course there's yeah. a bunch of people that are like, this is ridiculous, but that's, it's, that's tiny in comparison to the people yeah. you reach and the lives you change. It's just like, that's such a huge benefit. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I can honestly count on one hand the amount of messages I've gotten from people or the amount of people that I've gotten messages from that were like wholly negative. It was like, you're evil, you're this, you should lose your license, something like literally just almost yeah. almost none. And but so I mean, just innumerable amount of people saying that they've had they've massively benefited their lives, uh, which is just fantastic. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's uh definitely keeps keeps it worth doing anyway, you know, and and uh and just helps you 
ignore the haters, you know, because like they just they just don't know. They just don't care. And so who cares about them? You know, they'll yeah. come around or they'll, you know, die of oxalate poisoning. You know, it's on them, you know, at that point. So uh, all we can do is is what we can do. And and you know, that's something that um that uh, Joseph Campbell said is the mythology uh expert guy, brilliant guy, very interesting. And he, you know, someone was asking him about like different views and things like that. And he just said, listen, no matter what you think or believe, somebody somewhere hates you for it. So you might as well just do what you think is right and just ignore them. So that's what you got to do. And far more people are actually getting benefit from this. And the, one, the ones who just talk trash about it, they're the ones who have never tried it. They're the ones who have not actually done, gone in, into it and said, okay, well, I'll try for 30 days. I'll do the line diet for 30 days. You know, they would see, they would understand at that point. And, uh, and if they were honest, they would, they would try that and they would see for themselves what it was like, but you know, not everyone, not everyone, um, you know, has the integrity to, to do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I have to say on the whole, it's such a supportive community and, you mm. know, it's, it's full of people like Rory who've had really horrible health conditions and journeys and mm. they've discovered something that works for them. And then, People just get around each other and it's, uh, it, it is really nice on the whole. So mm. you know, that's one of the reasons I wanted to reach out to you, Rory. I was like, mm. oh, let's, you know, let's make it, make a new connection here. Yeah. No, it's been awesome. The like, cause I've been in vegan and carnival community and it's, it's completely different. It's, <laughs> it's supportive initially when you're in vegan, but as soon as something happens, it's like excommunicated kind of vibes and, you know, like, I'm not feeling good. No, you have to stick to the plan. Like, you know, you can't leave, you know, don't leave me type thing. And then mm -hmm. you're excommunicated type thing. Um, not, not everyone, obviously, but that's kind of the general vibe. And here it's like, Hey man, like, welcome. Cool. I'm welcome. Yeah. It's like, it's a cool club. And that's yeah. literally been 100% of my interactions. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, and yeah. even, even like that, you were like, you know, you started eating pumpkin again, you know, I didn't start mm. just being like, you son of a bitch, you know, it was, like, <laughs> it was just like, great. You know, if they, if they don't bother yeah, you and you enjoy them, go for it. You know, like I, you know, pumpkin doesn't really interest me like more than a steak does. So I was like, oh, all right, but I don't care, you know, like, and, and that's the thing, you know, it's like people, people are doing this because, you know, they, they understand that there actually is a lot of data and science behind this, you know, just simple biology. This is what, this is what we are. And if you're designed to eat a certain thing, that thing is the best thing for you. I mean, it's just, it's, it's simple as that, that is a biological law. And so, you know, and, and, but people get to do with that with what they will, you know, it's not, it's not, there's no condemnation. It's just like, Hey, here's this information. People are using it to help themselves, you know, and if you want to try it, try it. And if you don't, don't like, who cares it's not it's not taking a steak off my plate yeah i love that i i felt i i did feel initially when i was starting to introduce foods that maybe there'd be some sort of excommunicado type of thing you know the you know vegan trauma thing but yeah it's definitely no one cares yeah, someone's yeah. gonna someone's <laughs> gonna come and collect your carnival card yeah 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 we're all we're, we're all in the back, same man. club though no, no I think just, just meat, meat is king mm. exactly we should all be on the same boat but yeah 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 well and, and uh, you know just having that 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 uh vegan ptsd you know like dealing with those sorts of people you're like oh what do i do what's going to happen you know yeah. and uh yeah well and and the thing is i I've, i obviously think that just eating meat is is the best and that's why i do it and um but i i think that really just just eating meat and not being afraid of meat and not being afraid of the fat in meat is I think the most important part of this as, as people just understand that and then are just not afraid of it and not avoiding it. And they just eat it. If they enjoy it, I think that's going to do so much for their, their health and you want to, and avo avoiding high oxalate foods, avoiding high, you know, foods that are higher in certain toxicities, avoiding, avoiding highly processed foods and seed oils and things, sugars, added sugars, things like that. I think you do that and you just start eating a lot more meat. The, the amount of health problems that are going to resolve and the, the trillions of dollars that will be back in people's pockets and back in the industry uh, doing actual good things for humanity in the world, you know, it's, it's just going to be in, in, immeasurable. It's just going to be an absolute, absolute, you know, boon on the world. And so, you know, I mean, it doesn't have to, the world doesn't have to go carnivore. It just don't be afraid of meat. And stop eating highly processed crap. I mean, it's, it's pretty much that that simple. Well said. 
Yeah. Rory, regenerative agriculture. I know that's one of your interests. Have you have you got plans to do something in this space? Are you already doing something in this space? Uh, talk to us. Yep. I have $1 saved up for my farm so far. Killing it. Perfect. Um, <laughs> yeah, my... My, I've got, I've got a huge passion for. I'm not like super, like super knowledgeable about all the minerals and the things in the soil and the carbon and all that sort of stuff. But I've got that drive and passion because I watched a doco called Kiss the Ground. Um, but before that, I was told about it, and they were just talking about how, you know, there's a very limited amount of topsoil that we've got left on the planet because of modern day agriculture, and uh, you know, this is spanning decades and and uh even millennia of over thousands of years and we've been destroying the, the soil slowly and then there were like 55 harvests or something left i'm like hold, hold on a second <laughs> like 55 years left of food and then we're done it's pretty much it and we're a dust bowl just like the movie interstellar and mm. then they have to find a new planet to go on you know mm. so elon's on to it already but i think instead of going to a new planet maybe we'll try to fix this one so i realized that the key to turning it around was to be really involved with regenerative agriculture and animal agriculture regeneratively raised meat is one of the best things that you can do for the planet contrary to uh popular agendas mm. and i realized that okay if it's meant to be it's up to me I've got a bit of a platform now and I can use that to basically start educating about that. And I, my, my goal has always been to have my own regenerative farm. And so that's kind of what I'm working towards. I'm going to start documenting that journey from scratch, raising livestock, you know, having my own, you know, feeding the people. And I'm, I'm really excited about that, but just, you know, really using social media to drive attention to meat-based eating and animals and how important they are to actually ch like turn the world around and, and the state that it's in, like absolutely crucial. So yeah, I'm, I'm really into it. I'm just kind of, I feel like I'm new starting the journey, but I'm, I'm about to really go into it and I've been researching farm areas and I know where I want to do it. And yeah, I'm in that early stage, but that's, that's one of my huge passions and intentions of directing this. Cause yeah, like meat-based eating carnivore completely changed my life and my health. And so, and with all of these things that coincidentally happen, you know, like cows being burnt in the US or whatever that thing that happened was, you know, all these cows, there was like a fire on a, on a farm coincidentally. And, um, you know, all these cattle were affected and you know, there's all these, yeah. There's so I was like, egg, well, egg farms. That, yeah, that was the other one, egg ranches and farms. And I'm like, all right, let's, let's start more. Let's, yeah. let's do more and build more and just buy up as much land as possible. Like let's all just put our money into buying land and starting more ranches mm -hmm. and um, out doing it. So that's kind of where my long-term strategy or goal is, is around, you know, being a rancher type thing. I'm really excited about it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, and there's, there's not much topsoil on Mars, last I checked. So you know, probably, you know, probably good to fix the problem down here. <laughs> yeah. Unless we've got crickets with us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. man, no, not the bugs. It's just... <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, they better start getting some some cows up there now and start terraforming that place. So in you know, a couple hundred years, Apparently. they'll be yeah. be ready to go. But or you know, just do that here right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. man. Mm. Rory, where would where would you do it if you could have a farm in Oz? Uh, there are areas in Sunshine Coast in Australia that mm. um, I would do because we've got um, like family and stuff here. So I would start there, and then I would start expanding my um, you know my reach. Uh, like I'd like to own in Tasmania, overseas, mm. and just kind of ex just basically expand this network. My my. My goal is like, cause being on the land is so extremely healing, grounding, it's powerful being around animals. They're so beautiful. It's just, it's an incredibly simple life, which I really crave because mm -hmm. I live in the suburbs here, but my goal is to have a closed loop system where I grow the cows or like raise them. And then the jerky that we make comes from my cows. We make bone broth from my cows. We sell meat from my cows. We have, you know, supplements from that. And like literally everything comes from that. And then eventually it becomes like this closed loop system. So that's like 
the the goal. And so getting as much land as possible all over the place eventually is the goal. But starting on the Sunshine Coast, but it is very, it's very, I'm not going to say expensive, but it is very expensive <laughs> to get land now. <laughs> yeah. You know, 100 acres. How do I say cheap. it's really expensive? Yeah. 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 So yeah, but that's, that's the plan around there. Yeah. And nice. then, you know, like running workshops, educational stuff, you know, having mm. carnival work, uh, like retreats and, you know, just like teaching people about meat and all mm. sorts of stuff. So just, yeah, big education yeah. hub. Well, even having those on like the ranches and things like that and have people, you know, see what, what it's like to, to run a regenerative farm and, and see where the food's coming from and things like that. And, what a nice sort of situation that is and maybe even encourage other people to do it themselves. I mean, that's, that's something that I, that I've just been thinking about more and more. It'd be really nice to do. I, you know, I try to think of like, well, where would I do it? Because like, you know, I don't, I don't want to like just give up, you know, surgery and medicine entirely. And so I kind of have to be near like a major city, which is hard to do. It's hard to commute in, but there are, there are places that you could, you could sort of do that, but you know, not, you know, not as much as you would want. And it's a big ass commute. And there's some of these things like, I mean, I, I was looking at this a few years ago and I saw in Washington state, there was like a thousand acres and it was like a couple of houses on like little shacks. They, they were, you know, probably just tear them down, but um, gorgeous land, you know, just hills and valleys and rivers and trees and mm. everything like that. It's $800,000 US for a wow. thousand acres. Yeah. I mean, it's a little go, damn as nowhere though. Than- Two or three yeah. years, two or three hours from a major city, things do get really cheap. Yeah, so, you know, obviously you've got the the problem or the challenge of having to be near a major hospital, but yeah. if you can be three, four, five, I mean, Australia is massive, and there's so mm. much land that I'm sure would be fantastic range land that that it could be perfect for grazing animals. Mm. But as Australians, we're so we're so nervous to leave the major cities on the on the coastline, you know. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. There, there is a bunch of stuff like there's regenerative farms that are around the area that I'm looking at. They do, you know, beef, pork, pasteurized chicken, lamb and that sort of stuff. So I think there's definitely things. And I think even, you know, partnering with farmers or people that are already doing it. So instead of like going there and having to do everything yourself, like going in partnership with like, Hey, this is, you know, we work together. And I think that's like a good entry point. There's a, yeah, I think there's all sorts of ways to do it. I've just, um, yeah, it's just about lifestyle, you know, what do you want your lifestyle to be? Cause not everyone wants, like, it's hard doing farming, you know, apparently it's easy making social media videos. That's great. <laughs> but when you're got your hands in the, in the, in the dirt, that's um, hey, you're, hard work. you're farming likes and views and comments. It's, uh, it's true. You're already in the farming game. I am. Yeah. Just, yeah. Farming likes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, have you worked on ranches and things like that before, or would this be a new venture? I've I've worked on farms, mm-hmm. mainly like fruit picking and doing like seasonal work, mm-hmm. and I've done a couple of seasons of that, and that was that's that's what made me fall in love with it partially was that plus also uh, when I was working at the yoga ret- or living at the yoga retreat. I helped in the garden and did that sort of stuff. That was amazing. But my introduction to farms was. Yeah, it was like, you know, normal sprayed mangoes and all that sort of stuff. But just, I just loved the whole process. It was like, not, not I didn't do the spraying, of course, but just the the whole thing was fascinating and being on the land. And so, but I don't have an embodied experience around animals and I don't really desire to learn how to grow lettuce and things like that, you know, which is what a lot of people do of obvious reasons now as well. It's like, yeah, don't want to go there. But yeah, I don't yeah see animals I think will be, different story i think it will be but so i'm considering actually like not apprentice shipping but like working with farmers you mm-hmm. know and just be like hey can i just come and like work for free and just learn stuff mm-hmm. you know i think that would be really cool mm-hmm. and just yeah. document that journey yeah, yeah. Well, just more more content and uh, so that pays for itself right there and then you exactly. learn about how to how to run a ranch so it's perfect it's a win-win it's- that's the plan. Well, yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> and there, in, in Australia, there's amazing people in the region ag community. You know, like mm. we've had Jake Walkey and Charlie Arnott, both of them on our podcast. Mm. And I'd recommend that you chat with those guys. Mm. Um, they know where it's at and they're very generous with their time and their knowledge. Mm, yeah. Definitely will. I haven't heard of Jake, so I'll check him out. But I know if yeah, Charlie no, you, is. You'll legend. love Jake. He's doing the full closed loop. Like he's got his own 
He's got a 24 seven butchery. So you can go there at any time you let yourself into the shop. It's like an, almost like an honesty policy. You take the meat, check it out, tap your card, away you go. Wow. Where's that at? In Aubrey. Oh, wow. It's not almost an honesty policy. It is an honesty policy. Sorry, it is an honesty policy. But, like, but, like, but right I mean, they have cameras, obviously. I yeah. mean, you, you filch some stuff. They should be able to see it. And uh, and what he was saying was that uh, in, in that whole time, they haven't had anything go missing. They haven't had any stock go missing. Everyone's been really good about it. And, uh, you know, you're just, you're just, um, you know, you're, you're attracting that, that sort of clientele, you know, as well. And there's mm-hmm. cameras, you know, I mean, yeah. there's a backup, you know, so it's, um, you know, they can, they can sort of see if something's a, you know, a you know, couple big crates of meat just go walking out the door, you know? Um, and then J- Jake will track you down with his two little well, boys. Well, and, <laughs> and that's the thing. It's not, the door's not just open for just any yeah. vagrant to come through, you know, like you have, you have like a, like a 24 hour uh, gym oh, membership oh, pass and yeah, you, you have to buzz yourself in. So it's like you tap in, you go in, you get your stuff, you come out and it's just like, okay, something can't, was missing between, you know, these hours It's like, these are the three guys that went in there and like, Hey, what okay. the, you know, what, what's give going our, on? Give us our meat back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. So it's not like those side farm things as you're driving along and then no, no, it's, it's legit. Okay. It's a, like a beautiful right. clean yeah. retreat. Yeah, it's very nice. That's that's good in case you run out of meat at midnight and you're hungry. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. Yep. And, and, and that's, yeah, I have been there. You know, and like you know, we're like you're, you're just trying to track down. There's like a grocery store. I'm like, what the hell is open? I'm you know, I'm much too used to you know, the, the grocery stores in America, most of which are open 24 hours now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they weren't when I was a kid, but then they, you know, sort of, uh, when I was around a teenager, so they started becoming 24 hours and that became the market and people started demanding that. So it's just like, now it's just like pretty much any grocery store is 24 hours in most areas in America, um, except for like small towns and things like that, you know, and Even whole foods and places like that. Um, quite often. You know, like, but like the major chains, like, you know, Safeway, Albertsons, things like that. Those are generally 24 hours a day, certainly in the cities and in the suburbs. Yeah. There'd always, always be that. And that's, um, yeah. So it's, you know, it's, um, it's very convenient. And, uh, and then when I was in Ireland, it was the exact opposite. Like they kept like normal working hours, like everything kept working at like banking hours. So, so inconvenient. Like, <laughs> so it was like, well, that's when people work. You know, so you work from, from nine to five and then it closes down. So the stores open at nine and they close at five because that's their working day, you know? And so anyone else who works is not shopping that day. Like you, you know, you had to like take a day off work to go to the bank or to like get groceries. You know, it was like, it was, it was pretty nuts. And uh, it's designed, it was a system that's designed, I think for, you know, the idea of, of the nuclear family and having you know, having a wife, a stay at home mom who is at home all day and her job is just to take care of the house and go shopping. And so that's, that's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, someone's at work, they're working and then someone's at home shopping and doing all that sort of stuff. So when all the shops are open and they close at five o'clock and, um, you know, when I, when I first got there, I was just like, I don't have food. (laughs) There's no food. And, um, and and the stores aren't just closed. They have like these steel you know, like doors that come down. It's just like, they are shut, you know, like they're not messing around. And so you end up having to go to like convenience stores and things like that. Like a, like they call them like spar, which is like a seven 11 or whatever, you know, servo that you have here. And, um, and that's where you, you do your shopping, you know, and a lot of people would do their shopping, you know, out of these places. And like, I mean, you're getting the milk and it's like a day off from being expired. And like, you know, it's like, it's like, you're you're not getting the, like the selection of the quality or the prices uh, that you you would you know, normally want unless you take a day off work or school you know and then you and, then you go and uh, actually go to a grocery store it was wow. uh, it was a very weird one figuring that out and navigating that system that's fascinating yeah um, all right well Rory thank you so much for jumping on the pod that was a lot of fun it's good to get yeah. to know you better and um, good luck with the rest of your health journey and your social media journey mate. you're mm. killing it. Yeah. Thanks legends. It's been an absolute pleasure. And likewise, just keep spreading the message. I think the more that more airtime about it, the more people creating content about it. It's just like this, it's like a good version of an MLM, you know, it's like, you know, something happens, we tell their friends, they tell their friends and so on and so on. And I think, uh, 
yeah, hopefully it'll turn things around more. That's the plan, like at least. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Anyway, well, I think it's already working. Yeah. And so just we'll just have to keep keep going and, and hope for the best. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Thanks, Rory. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Cheers, man. Legends.